So, Father, we ask you today that you would help us to have ears to hear what your Spirit is saying to us. Father, we take authority over popular opinions and all the other things. But, Lord, we just want to hear what you want to say to us. And, Lord, we believe today with every fiber of our being that every word that you've ever uttered will come to pass. Every word you said is truth. And Lord, we can believe you that when you said, by my stripes you are healed, when you said you'd watch over us, when you said, Lord, that Lord, if we come to you, that you would in no wise cast us out. And Lord, we just thank you today that we are your children. We're joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We're children of the Most High God. And Lord, I I thank you today that, that, Lord, you have empowered us with the mighty Holy Spirit. You have anointed us. And my God, our words are powerful. And Lord, your word is is speaking to us. It's doing something mighty in us. And Lord, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Well, this book is an amazing book. And you have to have the ear of the Spirit to really understand it. You need to know that, and I need to know that, that there is a language that the Bible speaks that is not natural language. It's Holy Ghost language. And it's got to be spiritually discerned. It's got to be somehow or other caught in the spirit that bypasses our brain. Because the word of God tells us that this word is foolishness just to the natural mind, but it's something powerful to those that can believe. So this book, this Old Testament and the New Testament, the new is in the old concealed, and the old is in the new revealed. There's nothing fresh, there's nothing new. There's no, all of a sudden, some new thing. It may be some new revelation or new understanding that we get of something that God has ordained from the very beginning. I want to speak about releasing the power of God. Releasing what God has placed inside us. We are earthen vessels, but we're filled with the power of God. And God's plan is to flow through us. God wants to use us. We're not just people sitting around waiting for a rapture, as I've said that many times, but we are His his voice. We are His hands outstretched. We are more than, than what we can even think in the natural. God wants to use us. And to understand that, we've got to realize that this God that we serve is a supernatural God. He's not just another man. God is not a man. He's a supernatural power. Everything God does is birthed in the realm of the Spirit or is birthed from the throne of God. Everything He does comes out of the throne of God. Everything God does is supernatural. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He spoke a word. Last week it might have been, I, I spoke about God the Creator. And if we can understand the majesty and the power of of God's Word when He spoke what it created. It just didn't create something normal. It created something so dynamic and so powerful that even the the greatest scientists of today, it still confounds them. They still can't understand everything about it. Our sun burns at a heat 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. Last week I spoke about that there's suns in the, in the atmosphere, in the universe, that are a thousand times larger and even a thousand times hotter. The natural mind can't comprehend that. We need the Spirit of God. The Bible says that there is a river that flows from God above. There is a mighty river that flows from the throne of God. The Holy Spirit, the mighty power of God, was poured out from the throne of God. The Word of God, which was given by inspiration, came from the throne of God. It came uh, through revelation, dreams and visions. The Word of God says this in John uh, chapter 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This Word that we that we're read and what we speak about is living. It's alive, it's powerful, it's dynamic, it's amazing. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made 
that was made. The Word is God. The Word is Jesus. And if we can start to comprehend this and understand it, I believe it will give us greater understanding of how to move in the Spirit. Ezekiel was among the captives. The heavens were opened and he saw a vision of God. It says the hand of the Lord was upon him. He saw something so so amazing. I don't believe for one moment that Ezekiel had any idea what he was seeing. What Ezekiel was seeing is God foretelling of a new covenant, a better covenant. God was starting to speak about something that he was about to do. So releasing the, the, the supernatural power of God. In these sessions, I want to establish a foundation to build our faith on. If we're not sure, if we don't really understand, our faith will, will be built on the sand. But friends, we've got to build our faith on the rock, amen? So as it, when trials come, and how many people know trials come, that we'll be able to stand? That we won't be like, a, a, you know, tossed around by every wind of doctrine. So I want you to have a look with me, if you will, in Ezekiel. Amazing verses of Scripture here. Ezekiel chapter 1. I love this where it says, now it came to pass. Everybody say, it will come to pass. It will come to pass. That's an amazing thing. It says that he was among, it says, it will come to pass in the 13th year, the fourth month of the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. He saw an amazing vision as he looked there. Verse 10, it says, as this vision, he says, as, it, as he saw it, he says, as for the likeness of faces. Sorry, I better get this again. I'll, I'll put my glasses on. My eyes are going in and out all over the place. As for the likeness of their faces, this is the vision that he saw. He, he saw these things. And, and it talks about there was lightnings and there was thunders and goodness knows what was going on. And, and it says, and I looked in, in verse 4. Let me go there. That's where I should have gone. Then I looked and beheld a whirlwind was coming out of the north, a great cloud with ragings, fire engulfing itself, and brightness was all around it and radiating out of it, smits like the color of amber, and out of the midst of the fire. And it says, and from within it came the likeness of four living creatures. And it was, and this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. Each one had four faces, and each one had four wings. If you're reading this sort of thing, you're looking at it and you're thinking, man, this guy must be having a nightmare. No, he's having a vision from God. Had four, had four faces, and each one had four wings. It talks about their legs and that. But I want to go to the likeness. As for the likeness of each of these of their faces, each had the face of a man. Each of the four had the face of a lion on the right side. Each, had the, each of the four had the face of an ox on the left side. And each of the four had the face of eagles. I believe that the Spirit of God is speaking here. If we, if we have a look at the New Testament, which I believe that Ezekiel was seeing, he was seeing a vision, he was seeing a dream, he was seeing something that God was going to bring to pass in the future. He, he didn't understand it looked like all higgly-piggly perhaps to him, but he saw the face of a man. It says in Matthew, I believe Matthew speaks and reveals Jesus' humanity. Matthew speaks of this. It says the face of a lion. Mark speaks and reveals Jesus' kingship. The face of an ox in Luke speaks and re uh, reveals Jesus' servanthood. The face of an eagle is in John. John speaks and reveals Jesus' lordship. And so I believe that what God was trying to do here is express something that he was going to bring to pass. In Revelations 4, 6 and 7, it's, it speaks about the first was like a lion. The second uh, living creature was like a calf or an ox. The third living creature had a face like a man. 
the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. Let me suggest that these living creatures are the four Gospels, the living Gospels, that are in the presence of the Lord day and night. The Word of God that we speak, the Word of God is alive. It is powerful. And that man that spoke at that wedding the other day, as he spoke those words about love, as he spoke those words, it it might have looked, as, as you looked at a crowd of people, as if that word was just dropping out of his mouth and dropping onto the ground. As people looked at the way that he broke protocol, the way that he didn't do it, the way perhaps the more reverent people would do it. I was watching the man behind him as, as he was sharing, and he turned to him many times and he'd look at him, but this guy was stony-faced. He looked straight to the, he was there. So, and, and he mostly didn't really want to hear what he was hearing. But I tell you what, when that man put his elbow on that pulpit, he turned quickly. <laughs> he got his attention. Then he folded his arms and he, he did things and he got out and he did this stu- sort of stuff. But I want to tell you, friends, that that word of God that was spoken because I believe that it is living. I believe it comes from the throne of God. I believe that it is alive. I believe that it's powerful. I believe that it, it, as it's going out, it's seeking, it's looking, it's looking for a fertile soil that it may be able to drop into. And the multiple millions and millions upon millions of people that heard that man's sermon, I want to tell you, that sermon is not dead. It hasn't stopped. It didn't stop when he said amen. It is still going forth and is seeking and dropping into the hearts of men and women and I believe that on that great day there are going to be many that are going to stand up and call him blessed because of what he spoke because if we don't believe that our words are alive and our words are powerful that and that we carry something the dynamic power of God that the word of God that we have in our lap is not just a, 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 a fable but it's living and it's alive it's very very real more real than perhaps we could ever imagine. It's in the presence of God day and night. It flows out of God. Whirlwinds, great clouds with raging fire engulfing itself. And out of this power comes the living Word of God. I want to tell you, friends, there's there's power. There's anointing in the Word of God. The gospel or the word of God are in the presence of Almighty God and empowered by Him. doesn't matter what I'm saying today. If I speak the word of God, I have to have faith that God will take what I'm saying and plant it in the hearts of men and women. We're not just here today preaching a message, trying to preach a sermon. We're not here today just having a cracker and a, and a bit of juice. We're not here today bringing an offering to our God. We're not here today lifting up hands to worship. I want to tell you, friends, there's an enemy out there that will do anything he can to stop you from worshiping God. The Gospels. For the Word of God are in the presence of Almighty God and are are empowered by Him. So we see the Word of God is a live, dynamic force. It enters into the heart of believers. Today, the Word of God is entering into your heart. I have to believe that. Can I hear an amen? Not just your brain, not just your hearing. It's got to enter into your heart. It's living, dynamic. It enters into the hearts of believers. And it has an intent to birth a new man that will and can overcome all obstacles. Cancer included. And every other thing that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. The Bible says, no weapon formed against us can prosper. 
The Word of God is not just information. Some people might try to just use it as an intellectual thing. Prove how smart they are. Amy McPherson, I was reading her story, and as a young girl, she would gather a crowd because she could memorize and speak the Word of God. And people would come and listen to her the way she would just uh, recite the, the, the Word of God. But she wasn't saved. She didn't get saved. She actually became an atheist. But it took the supernatural power of God to change that young girl and turn her into a dynamic, powerful preacher of the Lord Jesus Christ. The same will happen to us. It wants to, it has an intent to birth something on the inside of you that will cause you to overcome, that no weapon formed against you will prosper. The Word of God is not just information, but the power of God to create in us the victory of Christ. That's how we live and have our being. The Word of God is living. Now let's have a look at some scriptures. Acts 6 verse 7. It says, Then the Word of God spread, and the number of disciples multiplied greatly. Note, the Word of God spread. Acts 12, 24, the Word of God grew and multiplied, or it grew numerically. Same again, the Word of God grew. I ought to tell you today that the Word of God is working mightily in you. It's implanted in you. It's imparted into you. If we can believe that the Word that is alive and powerful will, bring, will come to pass, that's which we believe for. Only believe all things are possible. We've got to believe that the Word of God will bring to pass that which we believe for. The Word of God is working mightily in me. God has anointed His Word that will activate faith. Romans 1.16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Note, the gospel is the carrier of God's power to install a new heart in the believer. It's the word of God. Today, the enemy knows. That's why he's tried so desperately to take the Word of God out of schools. That's why he's trying to uh, bring some social gospel now where, where we can't speak the Word of God with boldness and with authority. We've got to somehow or other water the Word of God down so it can be acceptable. Well, I want to tell you, friend, the Word of God will never, ever be acceptable to an unbeliever. Because it touches, and I was watching the faces of people as that man was talking about love, and even as he, as he spoke to the ones being married, and as he looked at them eyeball to eyeball, and he challenged them, I had to tell you, man, that word would have been like riveting inside of him. And there are many people today that, that most surely will judge and condemn and pull down and, and whatever else about what he, that man had to say. I looked at so many of them that were snickering and, and giggling at, at, at the way that this man was breaking protocol. But I want to tell you, friends, it's time that we started to break some things. We've got to start to break some things. I am not ashamed of this gospel, the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. The gospel is the carrier of God's power. We're talking today too, as Chris was talking about the blood. There are blood, there are many, many facets of this Bible. But I want to tell you, every one of those things will somehow or other have an identification with the Christ. His word is everything about him. It's powerful because that's who he is. God, God's power comes inside of us. It, the gospel carries this power. In Romans 10, 17, it says, For faith comes by hearing, 
and hearing by the Word of God. When you speak it, the Word of God is released. The Word of God releases faith to the hearer. Paul was preaching, and as he was preaching, somehow or other, the Word of God that was going forth, the power of God, as he was sharing, and as he was preaching his heart out, that, that Word was a carrier, and it was carrying something so dynamic and so powerful that this man who was a cripple, this man, all of a sudden, something was birthed on the inside of him. I want to say this to you, friend. Something that was dead can be brought back to life. This man's body was dead. There's parts of his body that didn't work. But that living word, as, as, as it was preached, as he was speaking it, all of a sudden, Paul perceives in his mind, this man has now got faith to be healed because the word of God's gone in. What changed the circumstance, the situation when that man first walked into that meeting and sat down or wherever it was or they carried him in there as a cripple? What changed between then and then? I want to tell you what changed. The word of God penetrated. The word of God went in. The word of God touched that situation and Paul perceived it and he said, Arise and be healed. And this man jumped to his feet totally healed. I want to tell you today, friends, the word of God. God said to Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to cause you to be the father of many nations. He considered not the deadness of his own body or the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the word of God, the promise of God. I don't care how you put it. He staggered not at the word of God. He staggered not at the promise of God, but he believed. And because he believed, Sarah conceived. He, he had strength and Sarah had strength because that which was dead came alive. And I believe that the church, though she may be dead, though she may be staggering around, though she may not be where she is, I believe with every fiber of my being that God is going to raise her up and she's going to be a powerful church. Hallelujah. Because that's what God said about His church. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. When you speak it, the Word of God releases faith in the hearer. In the believer, amen. Again, in Acts 12, 24, it says that the word of God grew and multiplied. It was the word multiplied, not the church, even though it resulted in the church multiplication or growth. 1 Peter 1, 23 says this, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible Through the word of God which lives and abides forever. I love that. When we share the gospel in faith, God's seed comes out of our mouth looking for fertile ground to germinate. God watches over his word to perform it. His word shall not return to him void. It shall accomplish that which he has purposed it to accomplish. Hope you don't mind me using scriptures. <laughs> Hebrews 4 2 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the vision of soul and spirit. <laughs> is anybody catching anything? When that man spoke about love, the truth that were in his statements penetrated the darkness. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. As I was reading this, I was, I was thinking of a samurai sword. Is that what you call them? How sharp they are. And sometimes you've got to let your imagination go a little bit because, you know, I'm not talking about that sharp knife that's in your kitchen drawer that your husband won't sharpen. <laughs> 
My, I, I had to think, I, I'm thinking of that, that samurai sword as they, as they slice through things and, and it doesn't even move. And then they walk over and flick it because it's gone straight through that fast. The Word of God is living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit and of joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. The Word of God is powerful and it is alive. In Psalm 119, uh, verse uh, 129, it says, The Word is a lamp to my feet or to my walk. The Word is a lamp. Friend, today we can hang on this Word. We can take this Word and we can somehow or other feed on this Word. And when you, when you read it, it's not just a, a book that we're re- reading. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we were healed. We all like sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the, in, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. And yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shearers to silence, he opened not his mouth. And when he did open up his mouth, he spoke truth. He said, I love you. God so loved us that he died for us. Only believe all things are possible. Only believe all things are possible. Mighty word of God. The old For the new is in the old concealed and the old is in the new revealed. Everything that he's ever said will come to pass. What an amazing book. Today we celebrate a time which we celebrate every week, every day. I want to encourage you, friend. Get hold of the Word of God. Find out what the Word of God says about where you're at and let Him fill your life. Amen. I want you just to stand with me today. Can we have some oil, man? We've got a... I love what Chris was talking about, the power of the blood, the power of the word, the power of doing what God says, also the power of sowing and reaping, the power of of trusting in God, the power of taking God's word, says over here, in and out, backwards and forwards, The enemy trying to steal what God is doing in your life. But I want to tell you, friend, I want to tell you, honey, the Word of God will not return to him void, but it will accomplish that which he has purposed it to accomplish. And he says in Jesus' name, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Now, devil, you get your filthy hands off this woman. Amen. Honey, in Jesus' name, that tooth condition, whatever it is, you are loosed by the power of God. Not by the power of Neil, not by the power of this church, but by the power that God has invested in His Word. Amen. It says to anoint those that are sick. that If there's any sin in their life, it will be forgiven them. Amen. If you're in this place today and I'm not saying that you've got sin in your life, but what I'm saying is if you need healing in your body, would you come out believing God and allow us to, as the elders come right now, that we're going to anoint you with oil. 
We're going to believe God. Honey, shakarandi kiddie baby. You are a sight for sore eyes. Amen. <laughs> but oh, glory. I love your faith. I love what God is doing in your life. Others you might want to come to. Come on, elders, come out. Glory, 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 glory. I talk to this lady on the phone. I get off the phone. I'm excited. Amen. I am so excited. Hallelujah. Glory. Touch you, Jesus. By your anointing. Jesus breaks a yoke. By the Holy Ghost and power. Just as the prophet spoke. This is the day of the latter rain. God is moving in power again. By the anointing, Jesus breaks a yoke. We break that yoke. In the name of Jesus, cancer, your power is broken. We say effects of drugs that have affected this body, you are loose from this woman. We break your power. We cast you out. Satan, you are a liar. And we command you, spirit of infirmity, break up and deliver this woman right now. Flee from her in Jesus' name. Let the power of God fill her life. Let their mighty anointing Oh, the mighty Holy Ghost power flow through her. Flow. There's a river of God flowing through you, honey. Have you been filled with the Holy Ghost, girl? You speak in other tongues? Well, this is a good time to start doing it. This is a good time to start doing it. A good time to let it rip. Let it rip, 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 let it rip. Oh, sorry. Sorry, don't. Johnny, you need a healing touch. Anybody else need a healing touch this morning? By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed, John. Be loose from that infirmity. Amen.